Hello everybody and welcome to another Full Moon Elections video. Congratulations, we've all made it to this Full Moon in Gemini. Um, and in this video we're going to look over the next two weeks from November 22nd until December 6th for potential astrological magical elections. Um, this time period is actually not very good um, for elections for various reasons. Uh, the first one is that we're kind of dealing with a waning moon. And in waning moons, we have to focus on, you know, giving back or releasing or severing in some way, just because that's kind of the theme that the waning moon creates. And a lot of the mansions of the moon that the moon will pass through during this time are much more focused on kind of waxing um, ideas. So like these, uh, these mansions tend to be more for healing or for, you know, gain or increase or profit in some way. And those are just really difficult to uh, weave into a period of time when the moon is waning. Similarly, even with planetary elections, we're kind of dealing with kind of difficult time periods where even though Venus is in Libra and Jupiter is in Sagittarius, there are situations <laughs> that are keeping them from being utilized one way or another very heavily. For Venus, it's her incredibly slow motion, and for Jupiter, it's his upcoming combustion and the square to Mars that he is currently experiencing. Um, that being said, there is one specific instance that we'll talk about, um, the Jupiter Kazemi, which is going to occur uh, in a couple of days. Now, Kazemi is an important point in a planet synodic cycle. In an earlier video, I talked about how the moon phases are akin to a human life cycle. Like the moon is born at the new moon, she kind of grows and ages during her waxing cycle, she reaches her peak of maturity at her full phase, and then she kind of declines into old age as she wanes before passing away in a metaphorical sense uh, at the conjunction of the sun and being reborn as she comes out the other side. Kind of that continual life, growth, death, rebirth process that the moon goes through in her phases is really clearly illustrated. Uh, but what you probably don't know is that the other planets also go through a very similar thing when they experience their conjunctions with the sun. And this is something that Jupiter is experiencing right now. So let's go ahead and kind of look at that within the context of an astrological chart to kind of see what I'm talking about here. So this chart is set for the um, full moon, uh, the moon at 52, I'm sorry, at zero degrees Gemini, 52 minutes, um, directly opposed the sun. Uh, but what we're really focused on right now is Jupiter and the sun um, right down here. So the sun is at zero degrees Sagittarius and Jupiter's at three degrees Sagittarius. At this point in time, Jupiter is what we would call combust. Combustion is what occurs when a planet is within seven and a half degrees of a conjunction of the sun. So Jupiter down here within three degrees of the sun is combust, but Mercury, uh, who is at 10 degrees Sagittarius and within you know 10 degrees of the sun is not combust yet. So combustion is a really important time for a planet, but it has different meanings depending on the situation. So depending on what side of the sun the planet is on and what that planet is can kind of change it because it's like a life cycle, right? And as a planet gets closest to the sun, the life cycle ends. And as the planet moves away from the sun, that life cycle kind of continues. So in this instance, because the sun is faster than Jupiter, um, the sun will apply and connect with Jupiter before Jupiter can like get away because Jupiter is just too slow to do that. This is like death kind of approaching Jupiter. This is kind of like the old dying Jupiter is getting close to his moment of finality where he will join the sun and kind of pass away. This doesn't actually occur until a couple of days later. Uh, we've moved forward to November 25th. Um, and here you can see the sun is at three degrees Sagittarius 54 minutes and Jupiter is at three degrees Sagittarius 55 minutes. This is close enough to be within Kazemi. The definition of Kazemi will change a little bit depending on a particular source or astrologer. One of the older kind of definitions is that the sun being within the same degree of a planet makes that planet Kazemi but a more kind of technically exact definition would be when the sun is when 16 minutes of a planet. And this is a definition that I prefer primarily because this makes the planet and the sun kind of share the same physical space upon the ecliptic, uh, whereas being within a degree um, is, is more of a wiggle room. The, the sun or the planet's not con exactly within that same kind of physical space as the sun. So the 16 minute definition is really the one that I prefer. But here we have Jupiter, um, technically Kazemi, uh, within the 16 minutes. But the most important point of the synodic cycle is when the sun and the planet are at the exact conjunction within the same minute and degree. This is kind of the death and rebirth point of the planet itself. And this is hugely important for the planet synodic cycle. It is the beginning and kind of sets the tone for the whole other, for the whole cycle. Um, for Jupiter, this occurs at the same time for everybody. 
um, and my time it'll be like 12.30 a.m. and Greenwich Mean Time it's 6.30 a.m. So whatever time that converts for you, that will be the time that the, that the Kazemi occurs. Now, because the Kazemis are kind of rare and significant moments, um, and because of that, they tend to get a lot of hype around them, especially within like the astrological community. Um, they are the renewals of cycles for planets, and that can have important distinctions. Um, but when it comes to, say, like talismanic magic, Kazemis can be... Kazemis are less useful for talismanic purposes and more useful for ritual work. Um, so one thing that you'll probably see happen is people talk about um, like Jupiter Kazemi talismans coming out, and um, those can definitely be real things. I'm not trying to say that they're not, but in this particular instance, um, because the moon is not configured with this... Uh, in any real way, it's not going to be very useful. Uh, like right now, here for me at least, when the uh, when Jupiter and the Sun are conjoined, the Moon's going to be at 14 degrees Cancer, and applying a square to Venus down here in Libra, and that's not there's no connection between the Moon and the planets and Jupiter and the Sun involved, so that's not going to be a very good um, talismanic purpose election. But what it can be is a really great petition or ritual um, opportunity for Jupiter pieces. Like if you have any sort of Jupiter talismans, um, this would be a great time to kind of clean them and like renew their purpose. You know, whatever they were whatever they were originally created for, this could be a really great time to reassess how far you've come in obtaining that goal that you created the talisman for. Cleaning the talisman, kind of treating it like new and getting it kind of um, reinvigorated with that um, creative potential that the sun bestows upon planets as they can join him. So that's my little aside about Jupiter Kazemi. It occurs on uh, the the night of November 25th, uh, but like I said, it will depend on your time zone exactly. But let's go ahead and move on to the electional charts for this two-week period from the 22nd to the 6th. Unfortunately, there really aren't a whole lot. I only have three to share with you this time, um, and that's just kind of how it has to happen sometimes. We're gonna, have, we're gonna have hits and misses depending on what we have to work with. Um, it was really kind of disappointing. <laughs> because even though the moon is going to pass over a lot of the Bohemian fixed stars, there was always some issue uh, involved with making them really good, you know, talismanic uh, elections. And that's just how it goes sometimes, you know, beggars can't be choosers. And all we can do is kind of keep an eye on what's coming up ahead. So our only other kind of significant moment for astrological magic um, for the United States happens on November 29th at around 6 a.m. And here we're focusing on a 12th mansion of the moon talisman. And this is one that we've been able to kind of make for the past several lunations just because of kind of where everything is falling uh, in the zodiac right now. And the 12th mansion of the moon, if you don't remember, is a moon that's good for separation, dissolution of bonds, like good for breaking bad habits and, you know, getting people kind of out of your life that you don't want to keep around anymore. Um, and this one kind of follows the same structure as the previous one. So if you've seen those videos, you're kind of aware of it. Um, the moon here in zero degrees Virgo is placed in the 12th mansion on an angle and she applies to a planet that can reasonably fuck shit up um, because that's what we, we want to have happen. We want things to be broken and for people to move on or separate from one another or for you know someone to overcome or separate from something that's holding them back in some way. More positive uses of kind of the waning moon energy. And in this instance, it's gonna be Mercury uh, retrograde in Sagittarius in the first house. Um, and that's gonna be a beautifully, <laughs> just a beautifully destructive and dissolving influence. Um, even with the conjunction with Jupiter, which should ideally help to kind of smooth it out and make it less disastrous or less stressful for the individual um, doing it. The Lord of the first house in this one is going to be Jupiter here. I'm sorry, it's going to be Mars here uh, in the fourth house of Pisces, um, who is also square all of this. So this will be a really great moment to really sit down and, you know, think about what you want to move beyond, what's no longer serving you, and put something, you know, really concrete down to move away from that. If you need any information about what you need to complete, you know, this talisman or any other talismans, um, I talk about, you know, make sure you're watching the bottom as the information comes by and then check out the, the description for links for more um, helpful information for you. So the other election chart that I wanted to share with you is going to be a fixed star election. This one is also for the United States, but there is a Western Europe equivalent, even though there are a little bit of issues with it. Um, we'll talk about it, I guess, and make you and you can make your own decision about it. Um, but in this instance, it's going to be the fixed star Spica, which is one that we've covered before. Um, and here we're going to have the, the ascendant at 24 degrees Libra uh, and the moon in the same degree. And what you really want for fixed star talismans is you want the, you know, the moon and star on an angle. 
and you want the moon to apply to a planet who's of the same nature of that star. Spica is of the nature of Venus and Mercury, and here the moon applies a conjunction with uh, Venus in Scorpio, which kind of ticks off that box. It's not ideal that Venus is uh, in her debility in Scorpio for this ta for this election, but it's what we have to work with. It is an opportunity, but Venus isn't especially strong. Um, that's not necessarily an issue per se, because you're really just using that kind of moon plus Venus plus star energy to make the Spica uh, talisman stronger and more like itself. Um, but the, you know, ideally you wouldn't do that with Venus and the sign of Mars, right? Um, so that might be uh, something to think about. So here's that Western European equivalent of that Spica Talisman election that we just showed. Um, here the moon and Spica have moved to the midheaven instead of the ascendant, which may be a little bit easier. Um, and the moon is applying that conjunction with Venus still. And Spica is of course a star of the nature of Venus and Mercury. Oh, hello. Come here. Ugh. Yes. So that kind of, you know, checks those boxes that we needed just like we needed them in the North American version of it. Um, the kind of downside for this one is that now the Lord of the First House has changed. Um, we have Sagittarius on the Ascendant, which points us to Jupiter, um, who is uh, conjoined the cusp of the Twelfth House <laughs> and still combusts the Sun. So the Lord of the First House is not kind of, is not as well situated um, or as unafflicted as the other chart was, which had Venus as the Lord of the First House in Scorpio, which isn't great, um, but definitely not as messed up as um, Jupiter here, who, even though he is in his domicile, is suffering from kind of being in the 12th house and combust the sun at the same time. So something to consider, something to look at. Not ideal, but it is an opportunity that you could potentially pick up if you needed, um, you know, something from Spica at this time. And of course, um, you don't have to use these um, elections for talisman making. That's kind of what it's geared more towards, but these can also make really great petition um, opportunities as well. And petitions kind of have less permanent effects, uh, we'll say, than the talismans, which will kind of exude their effects over time throughout the life of the physical object. But petitions are a little less, uh, they have a little less bite back in them. So, all right, those were all the elections that I had to show you for this two-week period. So, of course, after the Sagittarius new moon, we'll be back in the waxing phase, and hopefully we'll be able to pick up more interesting and useful election opp uh, opportunities. Uh, but until then, this is the best that we've got. So I will see you then, and everybody have a happy Thanksgiving, if that's what you're celebrating. Uh, and if not, take care until next time.